Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. You are watching Chief Chat with the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. I am Julie Mitchell, co-host of Chief Chat, and I am here with Leah Matthews, the other co-host of Chief Chat, and we have a terrific guest for you today. Chief is usually the host of the show, Chief Osby. He had an unavoidable delay, so we are just going to press ahead. And we are so happy that all of you are here with us today. How's it going, Leah? Good. How are you, Julie? Good. It's good to see you. It's been a minute, but I'm super excited for today's Chief Chat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Chief Chat on Monday. On Monday without Chief, but that's okay. We can we can soldier on or Air Force on, I guess. I don't know. Fly <laughs> on? <laughs> well, we have a fantastic guest with us today. You guys have probably cried your way through one of his novels or hit movies, and every one of his more than 20 books has been a New York Times bestseller. His latest novel, The Wish, was released last week, and it's available tax-free at shopmyexchange.com. And tell you what, they should have issued a mascara alert for this one. It's good. So please (laughs) give a warm chief chat welcome to Nicholas Sparks. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Nicholas, yes, we're super excited to have you on. So thanks so much for joining Chief Chat. Where are you coming to us from? Coming to you from my hometown in New Bern, North Carolina. Just finished up uh, all the traveling for my tour and just first uh, free day back. And here I am doing more media. That's how it goes, right? (laughs) Well, congratulations on The Wish. And again, as a reminder for those watching today, it's available tax-free at shopmyexchange.com. Nicholas, what can readers look forward to in this novel? Well, a great story, right? That's what I try to put out, an original story, one they haven't read before. Uh, It explores, it's a novel that explores a couple of themes that I've, I've wanted to write about for years, but never found the story. One of them is uh, a 16 year old pregnant girl who decides to give a baby up for adoption. And what's her life like at that moment? And, and, and where does it go? So I've always wanted to write about that. And I always wanted to do a, a Christmas story in a way, or, or a novel that you could read every every year around the holidays. And, and I don't know, hopefully it, it moves you in the same way that some of the classic Christmas stories do. Um, of course, at the same time, it's coming out in the fall. You know, it, it's not exactly a Christmas story. Part of the story does take place around the Christmas season. But, you know, I just hope pe- in the end people enjoy it. And I loved the themes of family, of love, and faith that echoed throughout the novel. Those were very strong themes. It made it easily readable and enjoyable to read. And you're right, it make, it would make an excellent Christmas story. I love the Christmas themes too. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you know, when you write about family and love and faith, um, you know, those are themes that have resonated through a few of my different novels. And in this one, I guess, especially the, the faith element's very strong in at least one part of this story, because it's what sets up the entirety of what happens in the story, right? You have your, your uh, young female character, she's 16, she's pregnant. And don't worry, I'm not giving away any spoilers. You find this out very early in the book. Um, and the, you know, the first question is, uh, why is she going to go through with the pregnancy, right, if she's so young? And in this case, it's because she comes from a very Catholic family. And, you know, the the other option just isn't even on the table. And so they do what you used to do back in the old days, and they, they ship her off to live with a relative for the, for the course of her pregnancy so that people back home don't know. And in The Wish, one of your characters is a newly admitted West Point cadet. So you've had several characters in your novels who are in the military, like in Dear John and The Return. So where does your inspiration for these characters come from? 
Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. much of my extended family, uh, all the way up, both sides of my family have been uh, military people. You know, both my grandparents were in the military. You know, both of my, I have two uncles who've been, who are Navy doctors. I have uh, my other uncle on the other side of the family. He was an Air Force pilot. You know, I've had people in the recent military. I've had cousins and nephews that have served in the military. So in my family, it's just a, uh, a, a career path that that many people choose for uh, at least part of their lives, um, and so it's it, it just feels normal to me. Then you add to that that I live in North Carolina. I live in Eastern North Carolina, so an hour and forty minutes away is Fort Bragg, and forty five minutes away is Camp Lejeune, and fifteen minutes away is Cherry Point Marine Corps Air Station. Then you know about. 50 minutes away is Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. So I'm literally surrounded by, by the military. If you go a couple hours to the north, then of course you have Norfolk Navy Yard. So it is every everywhere I look, it's military. It's just very ubiquitous here in Eastern North Carolina. Not only are there a lot of active service people, but because the military is such a big presence here, you get a lot of retired military people here and they've spent a career hometown neighbors you know it's just a part of the way of life here and the military piece in the wish was very it felt very authentic it felt like you knew what you were talking about so i figured you had a military connection in there and i'm, I'm glad you were able to to share your family's a little bit of your family's uh story of service here with us today uh, so the Absolutely. wish, like some, oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the wish, like some of your other novels, shows us different characters at different times in their lives, and in this case, um, you know, more than twenty years apart, the story is kind of being told. So, how does this unconventional timeline help you tell the story? Well, I think it it it, it can make for a very effective story, depending on what story you're you're telling. I think. Uh, whenever you have a character that you like and maybe they're 16, there might be part of you that wonders, hey, what, what are they going to be like as adults? And in this particular case, I give you a bit of both. So the main character in the story, she's named Maggie, and you meet her when she's 39, right? This is at the beginning of the novel, and then she tells a story about when she's 16 years old. And you know, I, I think it really fills you in on the gaps of not only who she is, but why she is the way she is. And you got to live through some of these experiences that affected her in profound ways. And to me, it just makes the character feel even more like someone that you know, you know or you, you, you feel like they could be a friend. Mm -hmm. I definitely Thanks felt that sharing. way about her. I felt like she was someone I'd want to, I'd want to meet and, and talk to. Thanks for sharing uh, from your perspective, Nicholas. So shifting directions just a bit, the last 18 months have been a little tough for all of us. So can you share what it's been like writing and releasing books during the pandemic? Yeah, in some ways my life didn't change that much because I've worked from home writing novels for you know, 25 years, so to speak. So, you know, I wrote The Wish, for instance, during these COVID times, but at the same time, it, th there was so much you couldn't do. You couldn't necessarily see the the people you wanted to see for various reasons. Maybe they they live far away and you were unsure about travel, or maybe they were at an age where uh, you, you felt like they had underlying conditions that, you know, COVID <laughs> doesn't work well with. And, and the last thing you want to do is to, to cause harm to someone that you love. So like everybody, you have a lot of those, those elements. Fortunately, my kids are a little bit older, but even with that said, you know, you had uh, the stress they felt. My daughters ended up giving the, giving up the last couple of months of their senior year. And then their first year in college was not a traditional first year in college, you know, uh, certainly nothing similar to what I went through. You know, two of my three children were online the whole time. The other one had classes, but even that was a little bit different because so many of the, the other social activities were canceled. So, you know, you're dealing with, uh, with the pressures that, that I felt were, the, the, it's the same, right? We're all, in, we're all kind of in that boat. It definitely was uh, something we felt like uh, uh, 
it was a change and he had to get used to it. And, and there were some, some stresses uh, that you had to learn to adapt to. Absolutely. Well, hopefully we're all coming out the, the other side. Um, I know it's been a rough, um, you know, 18 plus months. And Nicholas, you've had 11 of your novels turn into hit films and The Return has recently been optioned for film. How much involvement do you have in the movie adaptations? And then what is the process like to see your words go from the page to the screen? So my, over the years, it's very, my role in the production, you know, early on, I was just basically the author and you might consider me a consultant, right? I had no formal title. Later, I began to produce the films uh, as one of the producers. So really co-produce the films. Occasionally I've written the screenplay. And so now I have a bit more involvement in, let's say, all the decisions that go into the making of a film. For instance, you, um, you the, your first step is to hire a screenwriter. And then once you have a screenplay that you're happy with, then you look for a director. And then once you have the director, then comes casting. And then after casting comes everything else from location to when is the film going to go? When are they hoping it's going to release? And, and so I'm involved in all of those steps. And it's a very exciting process. It's very different than creating a novel. When I, when I write a novel, you know, I'm the king, right? I get to make all the decisions. Uh, <laughs> when you're making a film, it's very much a team oriented process because the studio has input obviously the especially the executive in charge of the production so they have input other producers have input the director has input the cast has input so i'm certainly one of those voices so you you learn to work with people and and i've been fortunate that everyone has always strived to just make the best possible film and and i've been thrilled with how they've all come out it's good to be king. It's also good to be chief. And we have Chief Osby here with us. He he made it. So Chief Osby, welcome to Chief Chat. Uh, thanks for joining us. And we have, uh, oh, we're have we chatting here with Nicholas Sparks. So. Yeah, no, thank you for the warm welcome. And I apologize for delays. You know, doing Chief Chat on a travel day is probably not the best decision in the world. And then <laughs> now I'm in. I'm literally in the back room of one of our stores. And so if you hear stuff going over the loudspeaker, y'all know I'm, I'm representing the exchange. So uh, Nicholas, <laughs> thanks for being here. And uh, uh, sorry about sorry about barging in mid-conversation. Happy to have you. <laughs> <laughs> we were just asking so, Nicholas what it was like to have his uh, films ad um, adapted for the screen. Yeah, and I heard his answer. So how, how hard is it to give up that much control? Because um, you talked about everybody's got a little piece of the pie and you're like, this is my baby. Like, how, how hard is it to give up that control? Uh, less hard than you think. But <laughs> uh, the, the, because you have to. I, I mean, I understand that that novels and films are very different mediums. A novel is a story told with words, and a film is a story told with pictures. And some things work great in novels, and they don't work well at all on film, like introspection, when you have a character reflecting about something. Um, other things work great in film, and no matter how good you write the novel, it's just not as exciting. Things like car chases or explosions or any scene with very heavy emotion, whether it's passion or anger. If it's heavy emotion, that just works so well on screen. And no matter how good you are as a writer, you're not going to make it as good as it'll be in pictures. So I understand going in that they're different. And uh, I, I work with people that we're all on the same page about just trying to make the best film that we can while retaining the spirit and the intent of the story and the spirit and the intent of the characters. So if you kind of go in it with that attitude, you, you feel okay. If you're, if you go into it with the attitude where, hey, every single thing in the book, we're trying to film the book, you're not going to be happy and it's going to be a miserable experience. But if you're just happy or say, hey, look, capture the spirit 
and the intent. Don't take one of my nice characters and turn him into an abusive alcoholic just for dramatic effect. You know, <laughs> capture the spirit and the intent of the characters, the story, and we're going to be okay. And for the most part, in fact, all up through now, every single film has done that. So I'm, I'm very happy with it, and I feel okay giving up control because I'm working with people who have largely the same vision that I do. And out of all the novels you've written, what is your favorite and why? Tough question to answer, right? Um, <laughs> it's right now, it's The Wish. <laughs> that's, the <one. laughs> that's the one that is brand new. So everybody, I love The Wish. It's my favorite. It's awesome. Uh, and, and course, it's like asking what, who is your favorite one. kid, right? <laughs> A little bit, sure. You know, you like them all for different reasons. And, you know, they, they're all kind of memory snapshots of a specific period in your life. You know, you write this one, it was the year your child was born. Or you write this one, it was uh, the year you coached track and field at the high school. So they all have different memories and they, and they, they you know, it's like, in a way, it's like going through a photo album too. So you like them all enough to save the pictures and, and reflect mm -hmm. back on them. But... You know, I, I've worked in, to make every single novel as best, the best work that I it could possibly be. So there we go. Good. And then can you tell us how you got your start and became a professional writer? Um, do you have any advice for others, especially younger viewers who um, may be interested in writing? Sure. You know, in the end, writing, learning to write is a fairly straightforward process. You, if you want to be a good writer, you have to read a lot. Um, you got to start with that and you got to read with an eye toward what works in writing and what doesn't and, you know, how are work, let me understand pacing or character development. So you read with an eye toward learning in addition to enjoyment. So you read the book the first time to enjoy it, then you read it the second time to learn hey, why did I enjoy it? What did this author do particularly well? What could he have done better? Was the book too long? Was it too short? How about this chapter? Was it too long, too short? How much narrative is there versus how much dialogue? So you kind of learn. So after you read and read and learn and learn, well, phase two is uh, you gotta write. If you wanna be a writer, you actually got to put words on the page and it's as simple as that. And if you're fortunate, you know, and you have a good story to tell, you know, you'll, you'll probably put together a story that uh, you're proud to have written. Awesome. So you have a, a very, very captive audience with you today. Uh, we had soldiers, airmen, guardians, sailors, Marines and Coast Guard members kind of joining in from all over the world. Uh, do you have any words of hope or encouragement uh, for our, to share with our heroes? Yeah, well, first, we'll, we'll go with thank you for your service. And again, you know, I, I mentioned earlier in the show, you know, my family has a long history in the, uh, in the military, all branches, right? But I've got, I have family members who have been Army, Marines, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, and the National Guard. And so I kind of span the spectrum of uh, uh, my relatives serving in, in, in virtually every branch of the military. So uh, great respect for everybody. Uh, uh, thank you for everything and uh, just very appreciative. You know, you make the world a safer place. You make our country a safer place. And uh, I'm really proud that I, uh, that many of my characters have had military backgrounds uh, because my experience has been that they're worth writing about. Awesome. Awesome. And maybe you can have a, a chief in your next book uh, <laughs> that, that, that ha has a podcast, but finds a way to love someone that, that he can't love somewhere else. I don't know. It's some, but uh, no, no, no. We, we, appre we appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> we pre appreciate your kind words and we absolutely appreciate uh, the books that you write because they kind of take us into another place uh, whenever we're in, in a dark place or maybe or we are deployed or, or somewhere else. And, uh, you know, just having those books to be able to kind of take a, take our mind off a, a lot of craziness is, is a blessing. So thank you so much for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I appreciate your kind words. Awesome. So uh, can you tell us what, what's ahead for you? Like, is there anything I, I know? I know we're on the wish right now, but it, we got anything else on in the hopper that you can tell us about? 
Well, sure. I'm working on my next novel. It should be out next year. Uh, the Notebook should be moving toward Broadway here, hopefully next year. I think it opens in Chicago in February. And then uh, we have The Return, right? We're working on the screenplay for that. So hopefully filming will start, you know, within the next year. It's hard to tell. We'll see how long the screenplay takes. And, you know, do we find a director quick? And can we get the cast and all that? But hopefully that's right around the corner as well. So, so can, I got a, a question because I've noticed there's a theme with, with their titles. It has The Wish, The Return, the, you know, The Notebook. Is there a reason why? Because uh, I, I, it kind of takes me back to uh, the movie about Facebook. And, and it, it started off as The Facebook. And then, of course, <laughs> Justin Timberlake's character was like, take the the off. It, it's much cleaner or whatever the case may be. So I was just wondering uh, why you have the kind of starting all your, uh, a lot of your titles. Yeah, uh, you know, titles are strange things. You know, I, I, are, they're important. Uh, they, they hopefully they capture someone's interest. It's part of what hopefully has someone pick up the book and, and examine it, even if they don't know who I am as a writer. So titles they can come before you write. They can come while you're writing. A lot of times they come afterwards. And with a lot of my my novels, there there are double entendres, right? We have the wish, and and what is what are we talking about here? What are we wishing for? And hopefully by the end of the novel, you know, you'll know what that is. But yeah, you're right. You know, in fact, I was thinking of uh, my next novel and it was right along those lines, the something. And my agent literally to me last week said, we might want to change it up. You know, you don't want to box <laughs> yourself into something like that. So I said, okay, what do you suggest? And we're now working on it. So pretty sure it's not going to be the something for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you had your chance to have The Chief as your next title. So <laughs> that could have been that in your hip pocket. <laughs> I, like, I like the way you're thinking, Julie. Always looking out for you. <laughs> So for our viewers who want to purchase The Wish, it's tax-free. ShopMyExchange.com. So it matters where you shop. Consider buying your copy of The Wish at ShopMyExchange.com. Nicholas, where can viewers go to keep up with you online? Well, I, think I have a website. I have Facebook. I have Instagram. I think I have Twitter, too, right? So Nicholas Sparks on all those things. And uh, just NicholasSparks.com or, you know, Nicholas Sparks if you're on Facebook or whatever. And you follow me and, and I let you know where and when I'll be having tours. And I and I try to keep you updated on, on the news as it, as, it, as it comes out and I'm able to post it. Because sometimes I know things early, but I'm not allowed to post it yet. So as soon as I'm allowed mm -hmm. to post it, the information goes out. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. So just, uh, you know, another housekeeping thing is for our viewers, if you want to rewatch this episode, uh, it's available on YouTube and Spotify and you can listen to it on Spotify. So please, please like, subscribe, all that fun stuff that they tell us to do uh, on YouTube nowadays. And, um, buttons. you know, Nicholas, you know, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I, I see I saw I saw the theme of most of your books are is centered around love. Right. And and we're in a really crazy crazy time in the world where love is probably what we need the most. And so I appreciate you for, for, you know, for, for, you know, pouring into those characters, but also just kind of having love as the common theme amongst all your novels. So I appreciate that. And we do definitely need more love in the world nowadays. I appreciate your kind words and uh, thank you very much. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, this means a lot to our service members and their families watching. Thank you so much for giving us uh, a little bit of your time today. Uh, we wish you all the best and, and we're definitely going to support The Wish uh, un until, you know, well, The Wish and then any other uh, endeavor that you're, you're a part of. So thank you so much for that. And if you don't mind, hold it on uh, for just a second after the live. Uh, we'll we'll uh, I get some information from you. I want to give you a gift. I'm, you know, thank you for being on the show. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Well, Chief Chat out. <laughs>